Okay, so good morning, everyone. Uh, happy Monday, happy new week. Uh, today we're going to introduce a couple of uh, new concepts. And this is um, the concept of rank, uh, null space, and nullity. Very, very simple concepts. And uh, with these concepts, we will be, we will have completed all the material that you need for your exam. I remind you that there are two problems um, that are using rank and uh, null space and nullity, and we're going to cover everything today. So uh, before I get to this, uh, are there any questions, please? Okay, this is, this is an excellent question. So the question is, uh, will we encounter a situation on the exam where we can't use a uh, Gauss elimination method for a four by four? Let me clarify something. Gauss elimination method is always usable. Always, always, always. The reason I uh, did not finish the example that I did on uh, Friday with uh, the Gauss elimination method was not because the method was not applicable, it's because I got those crazy big numbers in the end. And this is why I had to deviate a little and uh, expand with respect to the first column twice. Okay, Th that didn't mean that uh, the Gauss elimination method could not have completed that problem. Okay, so, so I would like to clarify that that uh, just because I, I wanted to bypass it for that particular instance, which I think was justified, that didn't mean that uh, it was not usable. So, so uh, generically, the answer to what you're asking me is no. No, you will be able to use the uh, Gauss elimination method, and that's what you should do. Don't try to compute a four by four in any other, using any other method. Okay, don't try to compute a four by four without doing uh, Gauss elimination. Okay, excellent question. Any more questions? So please? with the Gaussian elimination method, we're supposed to make it into a lower triangle and then mm -hmm. just multiply the diagonal? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So uh, was it me or uh, was the quiz today, did it have like fractions and stuff? Yeah, you can get fractions. Yeah, absolutely. But the, 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 uh, the final answer, the answer at the very end will not have a, uh, a fraction. That is once you, um, you multiply everything out, you should get an integer number. And uh, you know what, uh, why don't we do the quiz together just to see um, as an extra example. Okay, so, so right now I'm, I'm looking at somebody's quiz and <laughs> Uh, I see brackets. I, I remind you, when you work with determinants, they have to be, so when you work with determinants, you will be using vertical lines and the quality signs. If you, if you look at last time's uh, lecture, you will see that that's exactly what we said, okay? And when you have an integer, a, a determinant consisting of integer numbers, there's no way you can find the fraction in the end. So if you find the fraction, there's something wrong. So let's do it together. What is the last number? Negative one. Oh, it doesn't matter. Let's say that's negative one. Okay. So what do we need to do? We have a very nice pivotal right here. Eliminate all this, right? That's our first step. That's our first step. So 
uh, negative two times row one plus row two, negative row one plus row three, two row one plus row four. Okay, everybody with me? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, no, no, <laughs> I don't know what the grader is going to do, but it has to count as a mistake. We said that on Monday, we, we do not start using our own um, notation here. Remember, I made it very, very clear on Friday. So, so we do follow the things that we say here. Okay. Okay. So uh, what do we have? We have uh, zero uh, minus four, three and minus four. And then zero minus one, um, minus two, zero and then zero seven minus two what number did you say was one uh, this last negative one this last negative one was one let me see somebody else no, it was negative one. You're correct. Yeah. It, you had it right the first time. Yeah, no, I think I have the right numbers. Yeah, no, I got, I got the right numbers. Okay, okay. I'm sorry about this. Uh, and one, right? So now uh, we're supposed to work with this part, right? We're supposed to work with this part. And we're looking for a pivotal right here. I mean, you could divide by four, right? Is there anything better than dividing by four? Is there anything better than dividing by negative four? Exactly, flip two and three, flip two and three. So, um, so we do uh, is it? Yeah, you're absolutely right, actually. You're absolutely right. This negative two times three is negative six, that's negative five. Thank you. Thank you. Negative five. Okay. Uh, so let's flip row two and row three. And what, what do we do when we flip row two and row three? Can somebody remind us? What am I supposed to do? What's the right way to do it? Put a negative sign in front, right? Put a negative sign in front. One, three, negative one, one. Zero, negative one, negative two, zero. First zero, round. negative five, three, negative four. Zero, seven, negative two, and one. And now, to make your life easier, what can you do? Put this negative sign inside again into the second row. This one right here. So this will get you one, three, negative one, one, zero, one, two, zero, zero, negative five, three, negative four, zero, seven, negative two, one yeah absolutely Ab uh, absolutely you could put it into the first column without any problem yeah mm -hmm. if, even though technically you change that three to negative three you could have put it on into the second column absolutely yeah yeah uh that's one of the properties that we we gave and you can easily test it that when you multiply a determinant by a number, you can multiply only one row or one column of your choice by that number. If you want to multiply everything, you need to multiply by the fourth power. Okay, that's how determinants work. So now uh, we do 
five times row two plus row three and negative seven times row uh, two plus row four, right? Which is going to give us what? One, three, negative one, one, zero, one, two, zero, zero, zero. Uh, five times two is 10 plus three, that's 13. And this is negative four again. And then you have zero, zero. And uh, negative seven times two is negative 14 minus minus uh, two is negative 15, right? And then you get one here, right? Okay, so uh, so here, negative 16, you said, let's see. In negative 16, yeah, absolutely, negative 16, thank you. Uh, so now here, you might say, well, how do we do that? So, so you could, now you could expand with respect to columns and do, what you did before, but uh, is it possible to still apply the Gauss elimination method? Absolutely. Can you can you possibly get smaller denominators? Sure, you can get smaller denominators. Here's a trick. Here's a small trick, right? In, in fact, you could get one. In fact, you could get one. But but let me at least make it a little smaller. A, an intermediate step here is to add. Uh, row three to row four. Why? Because you're going to get a negative three. So row three plus row four to get a smaller number. So we do this in order to get a smaller number. Otherwise you can divide, you can factor out 13 and get over with it. But if you don't want to work with that 13, and some of you I imagine don't want to work with negative 13 on the denominator, Uh, you can flip rows, but now you have to be careful. Okay, I'm glad you're asking this question. So let me read your question completely. Yes. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, every time you flip the rows, you have to multiply by negative seven. That, that's a given. Yeah, absolutely. And now I will get negative three. And, and negative three again, right? This is so nice. Do you see now that you can factor out a negative three from the last row? So you can factor out a negative three from the last row and that row gets as good as it gets, right? Zero, zero, 13, negative four, zero, zero, one, one. Now flip them. So row three with row four, this will be three times uh, because the whole row is multiplied by negative three. Do you see that negative three is a multiple of all the entries in that row? Do you see this? Take a look at this. Okay, that's why you can factor out a negative three. You can factor out a negative three anytime you like, but here it's, it's just so tempting. So now uh, you will get three times one, three, negative one, one, zero, one, two, zero. Zero, zero, one, one, and zero, zero, 13, negative four. And now what do you want to do? You want to do negative times 13 row three plus row four. And what are we going to get? We're going to get three times uh, one, three, negative one, one, zero, one, two, zero, 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 one, one, zero, 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 and what else? Negative 13 minus four, that is going to give us negative 17. Okay, uh, what are you need to multiply now? You need to multiply the four diagonal entries. That is going to give you negative 17 times three, which is going to give you negative 51. Did anybody get negative 51 here? Is this correct? Yeah. Yeah, you, you could have done that. You could have done, uh, Jose, you, you could have done what you just said. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But uh, one of the reasons I did it this way is because uh, there was this question regarding uh, the, um, 
the feasibility of, of uh, the Gauss elimination method. And I just want to show you that, yes, it's, it's possible to do it, to go all the way, okay? Any more questions, please? Mm, okay, third rank. Okay, let me mute everyone. Uh, negative 51, you need to multiply the diagonal entries and you have one, one, one and negative 17. So that gives you negative 17. And then you shouldn't forget that you have that three in front of a, uh, in front of um, the term one. So three times negative 17 is negative 51. So, so again, let me, let me re-emphasize what we said before. Don't use brackets with determinants. Don't use brackets, okay? Because brackets are for matrices. Use equality signs because the determinant is a number. So we track down numbers here. Okay, so, so please do not forget these two very important things. So, and no, um, yes. I'm, I'm sorry, when you factor out uh, a negative three, you only do it for one row. You don't have to uh, factor it out the other rows. No, just one row, just one row. Because well, remember what it was what like said. a matrix. If it was a matrix, you, you would have to to factor it out like absolutely, all the rows, absolutely. right? You're, you're absolutely right. If you have a matrix and you want to factor out a number, you need to divide every single entry of the matrix. That's why, you know, that's one more reason why uh, we have to use different symbols for determinants and matrices. Determinants are completely different objects than matrices. So, I so see. and, and, you know what, L let me just do it side by side so that everybody can see yeah, it in an example. Yeah. So if, if you have a matrix, yeah. let me yeah. unmute everyone. Uh, uh, please do not forget to mute yourself. So let's say that you have something like this. Okay, this is a matrix, right? Because you can see the brackets, right? So if I want to factor out a three, the three has to be factored out from everywhere. So it will look like this. Now, imagine that this was a determinant. In the case of a determinant, you can factor out a three from the first row. So you get this. And then you can factor out another three from the second row. So you get this. And now you can compute it. So this is nine times what? four minus six, which is negative two, which is negative 18. Okay, and that's it. Do you all see the difference? Do you all see the difference? Yes, thank you. So how did you know this? The first three taken off already from the first column. Be because if it's a matrix. Because it's a matrix and that's how we defined scalar multiplication for matrices. We said that in order to multiply a matrix by a number, we multiply every single entry of the matrix. In the case of the determinant, we said that yes. if, we, if we fix all rows, all our columns, except for one, then what we get is a linear function, which means we can factor out from each row separately any number we like, or from each column separately any number we like. So if you write nine and write third, such as the third part of this determinant, how you know that you take off three from the first and three from the second, maybe it's different numbers. No, I, it looks I, I like think like one, one and one, nine no, or two no, and no. eight or something. No, so I, how do you I, write I, I, that? No, I, I think it will be obvious if you, unless you're trying to confuse somebody, when you do it, even if you had different numbers, I think it's going to be obvious. So if you, if, even if you had three, six, five, 25, and you wrote three times, five times one, 
uh, two and one five, I think people would understand what you have done. However, if you ask me, uh, it might be in your best interest and in whoever is going to read it best interest to actually um, factor out one number at a time. Don't, don't do two of them simultaneously, okay? So you don't, don't multiply three by five, you just keep them looks like that. It's okay if you put 15. All, 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 all I'm saying is, are you trying to, to uh, confuse one or are you trying to make try all to what it is that you're doing? <laughs> trying to understand, that's all. No, thank you. Okay. Uh, negative two, how did I get negative two? Can everybody see that uh, this determinant is negative two? It's four minus six, right? One times four minus two times three minus six. Four minus six is negative two, right? Yeah, that's what we're saying. That, that's what we said last time. That's what we said today. That's what we just did in our example. That's why I gave you these two examples. And you can see the difference between a matrix and a determinant. You see how things are very different. Okay. Now, um, I would like to talk about the rank of a matrix. The rank of a matrix is a wonderful thing. So what is the rank of a matrix? It can be defined in uh, lots of different ways. Okay, uh, but um, all of them are equal and it's not necessarily easy to see that they're equal. So, so what is the rank of a matrix? So rank of a matrix. It's the dimension of the subspace generated uh, by the columns. It's the dimension of the subspace generated by the rows it's the number of linearly independent columns It's the number of the linearly independent rows. It's the number of pivotal elements upon bringing the matrix to row echelon form. It's the largest, the, the dimension of the largest uh, 
non-zero minor determinant. Uh, let me explain this last one. So imagine that you have a matrix, right? One, two, five, three, zero, seven. So take this matrix. It's, it's a two by three matrix. So it doesn't have a determinant. Okay, I repeat, only square matrices have determinants, right? So, so this matrix doesn't have a determinant. Okay, so let's, let's be clear about that. However, given any matrix of, of, of any size, you can actually start deleting rows and columns so that you can get square matrices, right? And those matrices do have determinants and those determinants are called minor determinants, minor determinants. So, so for example, you can get uh, three different two by two matrices here. How, for example, you can delete the first row. If you delete the first row, then you get this determinant, right? Or, you can delete this row. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I said row before. I meant column, obviously. Or you can delete this column, right? Then you will get the one, five, three, seven determinant and so on. Okay, so, so for example, if you have a five by six matrix that has five rows and six columns, you can delete a column and you will get a five by five determinant. So, you can get many such, such determinants. You, you, for, for a five by six, you can get a five by five determinant, you can get four by four determinants, you can get three by three, two by, two by twos, and so on and so forth. If you were to compute all those determinants, starting from the largest ones, and figure out which one is the largest that is known zero, that dimension of the determinant, meaning how rows and how many columns it has, would be precisely the uh, rank of the matrix. Okay, that's how this works. That's how this works. Okay. And we said that it's the dimension of the subspace generated by the columns, the dimension of the subspace generated by the rows. It's actually quite remarkable that you get the same dimension if you use the columns or the rows. Um, and uh, it's the number of linearly independent columns, the number of linearly independent rows. So the bottom line is if somebody gives you a matrix, what do you do? What is the best thing to do out of all these things that I, I, I gave you? Can anybody tell me what is the most preferable way to find the rank of a matrix? Among all these different things, there's one of them that stands out and that's the way you should go. Which one do you think it is? Exactly, excellent job, Farah. It's this one, it's this one. Take your matrix, put it in row echelon form and count the pivotal element. Okay, so why don't we do this? So, so here's what I would like you to do as, a, as an example. Find the rank of One, three, negative one, two, zero, negative three, five, three, and negative five. Okay, find the rank of this matrix, please. Okay, go ahead. So, what do you do? You bring it to rho echelon four.
Okay, let's do it together now. Uh, again, please notice that I, I have brackets here. I'm working with row operations and I don't put equality signs because these are matrices. I have my first nice pivotal, so I do minus two row one plus row two and or, or parentheses or brackets are both fine for matrices. Minus five row one plus row three. Okay, so what do I get? I get one, three, negative one, uh, zero, negative six, negative one, and then zero, negative 12, and negative and zero, zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Okay, uh, I want the pivotal. So negative one six times row two. Uh, this will become one three negative one zero one one sixth zero negative twelve zero. So um, I do. 12 row two plus row three. And this is going to be one, three, negative one, zero, one, one sixth, zero, zero, two. Okay, finally, I would like to make a uh, two pivotal, so one half row three. And this will give me one, three, negative one. Zero, one, one sixth, zero, zero, one. Mark your pivotals, leftmost entries of leftmost non-zero entries uh, equal to one. So the rank is three and that's it. Now, in this particular case where you see now that the rank is three, could you have just um, multiplied by, uh, could you just have found the determinant? Uh, the answer is yes. You could have found the determinant, and if the determinant was on zero, then you would have uh, concluded that the rank has to be three. Okay. Questions? The uh, determinant of this matrix is one, right? Uh, the, the determinant of this matrix, no, it's not one. Okay, when you apply the Gauss elimination method, it doesn't mean that you're going to get the, the determinant in the end, because at some point you, you divide it by this, right? All the other operations, and you also did this. So the other operations that you did, did not change the determinant, but the determinant is not one. The determinant of the matrix that you got in the very end is one. But please understand that uh, when you apply the Gauss elimination method, the determinant changes. What doesn't change is whether it's zero or not, that, that doesn't change. But the fact that you could get it to be um, a different number. So these computations do not allow you to find the determinant. They just allow you to find the rank. Okay, you could have found the determinant separately and, and it wouldn't have been such a, um, hard computation. 
Okay, so let's write it down. So to find the rank, we bring the matrix to row echelon four. and count the pivotal elements. Uh, we were not trying to find a determinant here. Right, uh, I was trying to find the rank of a matrix. These are two different things, okay? And I used Gauss elimination method in both cases. So I'm not sure why you're saying that uh, we didn't use or we couldn't use Gauss elimination method. That's exactly what we used, okay? Yeah, but why does this surprise you? Uh, we're not trying to do the same thing. Computing the determinant of a matrix and finding the rank of a matrix are two different things. You apply the Gauss elimination method to the determinant, which is slightly different than applying the uh, Gauss elimination method to uh, the matrix, right? We already said that. The differences are you don't use equality signs, you use different symbols. So there's a significant amount of difference, right? Uh, if the determinant is zero, I'm sorry, first of all, if the determinant of this matrix were not zero, which is not zero, then we could have concluded that the rank is, uh, is one, okay? Because that would mean that all the rows and all the columns are linearly independent, okay? If the determinant came out to be zero, then the rank would have been at most two. And then here it would have been pretty straightforward because you would have needed to spot two linearly uh, independent columns. L let me give you a simple example, actually. This, this is a nice thing to consider. So take this matrix. If you find, call it A, if you find the determinant, I promise you that it's equal to zero. If you find the determinant, if you say, you know what, I don't want to do Gauss elimination method, even though I told you, please do Gauss elimination method. But you may say, I, I don't want to do Gauss elimination method. I want to go with the determinant because that's one of my options. So if you compute the determinant here, you will see that it's zero. What does that mean? This means, that the rank of A cannot be three. It cannot be three. So what can it be? It can be zero, one, two. Zero rank means zero rank, only the zero matrix has zero rank. No other matrix has zero rank. Can the rank be two? How do you know if the rank is two? Rank two means two linearly independent columns. Can you spot two linearly independent columns? Yes. This and this are linearly independent. You can see one is not a multiple of the other. So here the rank is two, the rank is two. Okay, so here's a, a nice little example where by computing the determinant, if, we, if the determinant was non-zero, yeah, and, but, but all you want to do is find two linearly independent columns. Yeah, sure. One and three are linearly independent and two and three are linearly independent, but you just want two of them, okay? We, we've seen that before, that, that uh, 
when uh, you extract linearly independent columns from a matrix to, to find the basis, that doesn't mean that you can only do it one way. But there are other ways to do it. But the point is that one way suffices for us. Okay. All right, so the rank is top. Now, uh, let's define the nullity. So, um, and the null space. So if A is a matrix, is a N by M matrix, the null space of A consists of all M by one columns B such that A times B is equal to the zero matrix, okay? It's dimension is called the nullity of A. This is actually quite straightforward to find. If somebody gives you a matrix and tells you find its, its nullity, uh, it says M by one, yes, M by one. So, so in other words, if, if I were to give you the number one, yeah, so this is, sorry about this. This is the number one, okay? So, um, I'm going to denote this, the null space of A, I'm going to denote it by N of A, the null space of A, okay? And uh, so the null space of A consists of all columns such that if you multiply your matrix by these columns, you get zero. Now, it's, it's, it's quite straightforward to find those columns. You know what? I, because it's a it's a column. I'm 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 just <laughs> just just put a normal B. Uh, just put uh, you know this little thing. I think uh, to make it look a little different. That's all. Don't worry about that. It's my silly way of writing B. Okay. So don't make too much of it. Um, to find the null space. We just need to solve the system uh, the homogeneous system, meaning the right hand side is going to be all zeros with matrix A. Okay. So, uh, for example, for example, example. Find the null space and the nullity. of A two, one, three, one, one, one of this matrix. So find the null space of this matrix. 
Okay. How are you going to do this? So take the augmented matrix that has one column, one extra column equal to zero. Why do you do this? Why do you do this? Let, let me show you, because if you take the matrix and you multiply by your generic X, Y, Z column, and you set this equal to zero, then uh, you will get the system uh, 2X plus 3Y, I'm sorry, 2X plus Y, plus three Z is equal to zero, X plus Y plus Z is equal to zero, which has exactly this augmented matrix. Okay, what I'm telling you pretty much is you do not have to write these steps, just bypass this step here. So jump directly to the, uh, mate, to the uh, augmented matrix and apply Gauss elimination method. So here, this is think when I apply Gauss elimination method is you can divide the first row by two, but it's much simpler to just swap the first and the second row to get your nice pivot output. And now eliminate two, so minus two row one plus row two. And this will be one, 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 zero. Zero, negative one, one, zero, right? Um, and when I say the null space, find the find basis for the null space, a basis, yeah, for the null space. So here, let me make uh, uh, that negative one pivotal. So I have minus row two, and this will give me one, 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 zero, zero, one, negative one, zero. Can anybody tell me uh, what the, uh, if I will have any free unknowns here? So I have X, Y, Z. Can anybody tell me if I will have any free unknowns? And what are the, what will be the free unknown or unknowns? Exactly, Z. Why? Because this column doesn't have a pivotal. Yeah, this column doesn't have a pivotal. I go back to my system and I have X plus Y plus Z is equal to zero. Y minus Z is equal to zero. I always start from the bottom, Y is equal to Z. Then I, I plug this into the top and I get X plus two Z is equal to zero. X is equal to minus two Z and Z is free. Okay, so now I, I can put the null space together. It's all vectors that look like uh, negative two Z, Z comma Z, where Z belongs to R. Uh, how do I find the basis? I factor out Z and I get negative two, one, one. This is a basis for the null space. And the nullity, which is the dimension of the null space, is one. And that's all. Questions, please. So, two new things today that again use the Gauss elimination method finding the rank. How do we find the rank? bring it to row echelon form and count the pivotal elements and find the null space. How do you find the null space? You create the system with uh, augmented matrix that has an extra column of zeros and you just solve it. I, I got to Z because I plugged it, right, right. Because why Z? Remember wh wh when I bring my matrix to uh, row echelon form, I always solve it by starting at the bottom, by starting at the bottom, okay? Always. 
Any more questions? Let's take a break for a few minutes and we'll continue afterwards. Okay, welcome back. And let's see if you have any questions. Are there any questions, please? I just think about the basis we had in such as the second literature uh, for the vector basis and the null basis. Is this is such a similarity between both of them? So, so, um, so, so first of all, uh, I'm afraid I didn't use the, the, the term null basis. I said the basis of the null space. The null space is a subspace. So as any subspace, it has a basis. Okay, that's all. So nothing uh, too uh, special about that subspace, but any more questions, please? There is a very interesting relation. Uh, here's how it goes. It says that the rank of a matrix and the nullity of a matrix is equal to the number of columns. So, so that tells you that if you know the rank, you can find the nullity and vice versa. Okay, so that's, that's a very, very uh, important relation to remember. And it also has a, an expression in terms of linear maps, because remember that uh, matrices are used in order to describe linear maps. And so we can say that the uh, dimension, so if you have a linear map T from V to W, linear map, then the dimension of V, meaning the dimension of the domain of definition, breaks into two parts, the dimension of the kernel plus the dimension of the image. This is part of a very interesting theorem, which is called the first isomorphism theorem for vector spaces, but uh, we're not actually going to study this. So these two relations are the two sides of the same coin. Okay. Any questions, please? Can you write what's this name? Yeah, the dimension. Can you write it? I'm, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, uh, sorry, it is. It looks like I am hanging out. Uh, the theory you just mentioned. So. It, all I'm saying is the dimension of the domain of the definition is equal to the dimension of the kernel plus the dimension of the image of the linear map. What's the, what is the theory name? What is the what? Oh, the you theorem. Uh, yeah, the yeah. Theorem, uh, you know Thank what? You. Um, never mind about the theorem. It's called the first isomorphism theorem, uh, but but it's not it's not this. This is a consequence of the of the, of the first isomorphism theorem. That's why I I didn't want to mention. It. Okay, Thank the you. first isomorphism theorem. So um, unfortunately, it requires a couple of things that we have not seen and we're not going to see. But uh, in some sense, it um,
Okay, any more questions? Why don't we do an example uh, where we're going to find both the rank and uh, the basis for the null space? So find uh, the rank of A and a basis for the null space of A. when A is one, three, negative two, two, one, one. Okay. So find the rank and the basis and the basis for the null space of this matrix. Okay. Let me give you a couple of minutes to get started and then we're going to do it together. Okay, uh, let's do it together. Now, you could try to actually combine the work. I mean, it, it looks so so much the same, but a, a, at least from the point of view of um, presenting the solutions to you, I, I don't want to mix them up. Okay, so let me do the run first. Can anybody tell me what is the most that the rank can be for this matrix? 
what is the most that the rank can be for this matrix? Very good. It cannot be three. Okay, that's what I want you to understand. You may have three columns, but there's no way they're they're all linearly independent. Okay, because the number of linearly independent columns is the same as of the maximum number of linearly independent columns is the maximum column of linearly independent rows. You have two rows. So are the rows linearly independent? You can see right away that they are. Or if you like, you can even take a determinant. You can take one, three, two, one. And this determinant is negative five, which is non-zero. So the rank is two. The rank is two. Okay, right away. You don't, you don't, I mean, is it okay if you did Gauss elimination? Sure, it's okay if you did Gauss elimination. But in this case, I want you to see how easy it is to find the rank. Okay, there are all these options on the table for us. So fine, I did an example where I used the Gauss elimination to find the rank. But this is very tempting to just say, here's a two by two determinant, which is non-zero, the rank is two, end of the story. Okay. For nullity now, for null space, what do I do for the null space? I do my Gauss elimination. One, three, negative two, zero, two, one, one, zero. So um, I do minus two row one plus row two, and that gives me one, three, negative two, zero, zero, negative five, five, zero. And then I do one fifth, negative one fifth row two, and that gives me one, three, negative two, zero, zero, one, negative one zero and that's row echelon that's row echelon and, and you can see you can you can when you do this you can always disregard the last column which is always going to be zero it's not going to be different and find the rank you could even have found the rank like this that's why i said you could have packaged both in one step but you know so what do you need to do now go to your system so you have x plus three y minus two z is equal to zero uh y minus z is equal to zero you always start from the bottom equation right y is equal to z z is expected to be free why because there was no pivotal in its column and uh, then you have x plus z is equal to zero so you replace uh y by z and this gives you x is equal to negative z. So uh, what are the solutions? Uh, negative z, 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 which is the same thing as uh, I got x plus z by plugging in y equals z, by plugging in y equals z into the first equation. I get x plus 3z minus 2z, that's x plus z. So this is going to be z times negative one, one, one. And that's it. Okay, this is a basis, just one vector. So the nullity is one. But then again, you, you already knew that the nullity was one, why? Because the rank plus the nullity have to add up to three, which is the number of columns, right? So. Uh, the number of columns is three, the rank is two, so the nullity is one. I mean, so, so there are more ways to know about the nine. So you have all these really, really nice connections. You have all these really, really nice connections. I would like to make one uh, comment on uh, the last problem for, uh, where does Z negative Z, we know that Y is Z. We know that x is negative c, so we put all this together in one vector. That's that's how we solve any system. Right? 
I know that the nullity, because the nullity is the dimension of the null space. So the null space has one basis vector. So this is one way to know that it's one. And the other way to know that it's one is from the dimension equation. Okay, either way is fine. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, if I'm asking for the basis of the null space, you have to solve the system. Finding the nullity is not enough. Finding the nullity is not enough. Okay, let's let's clear this up once and for all. Okay. Okay. Um, on the on the homework for next time. Uh, one second, there is one more question. So, so um, to get a nullity which is greater than two, you, you have to go to higher dimensions, right? Um, so you would have needed something like uh, one, one, two, three, uh, one, 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 let's say, okay. This, this will have nullity too. Okay, so if you, if you consider the corresponding, um, augmented matrix, then you do minus row one plus row two, and this will give you one, one, two, three, zero, 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 negative one, negative two. Now, this is an interesting example. Do you see that the second column now doesn't have a pivotal? So where do you go? You go to the third column and you do minus row three, row two. And this will give you one, one, two, three, zero, 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 one, two, zero. So, uh, so what are your, your pivotals? Would your X one? and Z be free in this case? Uh, I'm sorry? Would your X and Z be free in this case? Like you're gonna have free variables, right? And that no, not X, variable. not X. The, the free variables are going to be the one without pivotal element. So Y is going to be free and Z is going to be free. Let's see how this will play out when we write the system. So the system, Go back to your system. That's x plus y plus two z plus three w is equal to zero, and z plus two w is equal to zero. So you start with the last one. Z is equal to negative two w. Now you take z is equal to negative two w. You plug it into the second one, into the first one, and that gives you x plus y plus. Uh, negative minus four W plus three W is equal to zero, which means X plus Y minus W is equal to zero, which means that X is equal to minus Y plus W. So, so here is everything you need. Z is negative to W, X is equal to minus Y plus W, Y and W are free. So when you put your vector together, you will have minus y plus w, y is free, z is minus two w, w is free. So now you split it into two parts, w zero negative two w, w plus negative y, y zero zero. And you have w times one zero negative two, one plus y times negative one, one, zero, zero. And this is the basis. You can obviously see that they're linearly independent because they have zeros at different places and that's all. So this is an example where the nullity is two. Okay, and of course the rank is going to be also two. So this, this matrix has rank two, nullity two. So real quick, if you, uh, did you like have to find the null space to find the nullity? Cause you could just like, assume the node just by like seeing your reduced echelon it, 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 right so 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 here it's very easy to find uh, the the nullity because if you consider this minor determinant it's non-zero 
which tells you that the rank is two. So since the number of columns is four and the rank is two, the nullity has to be two. But we wanted to find the basis for the null space and finding a basis for a null space, you have to go through the uh, system, okay? Okay, and, I have one more quick question. If you had, if, if you had an extra row, would that reduce the nullity back to one? Because you would only have one free variable? Uh, it, it depends on that row. I mean, you could uh, theoretically have the, the row zero, which would have made it still equal to, to, to two. But if, if the row was non-zero and it had the pivotal element, then yes, the answer is yes in that case. And that would mean it had to be linearly independent, right? Right, right, right. So, so just by adding one row automatically, that doesn't make it uh, the nullity uh, uh, smaller. But, but if that row is uh, non-zero, it has its own pivotal element, then yes, yes, you're absolutely right. Then the nullity would be smaller, okay? Now, in, in, um, uh, I'm sorry, I know, I know you said Z was free, but you, you then changed it to W, right? No, I never said Z is free. In, in fact, I sold for Z, right? You can see it it's right written, here. It's written right there. Where? You wrote it right there. Uh, oh, where, uh, where yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, you're absolutely right. Here, yeah, I have to change that. W is free. Sorry about that. I, because I was looking at this, which is the correct thing. Okay. Okay. Um, now, uh, let's uh, take our attendance. So please give me this determinant as your attendance. I mean, compute it. Okay. Please give me this determinant as your attendance. And I just wanted to uh, say about the homework for next time. Um, which has been posted as usual. Uh, when I say the adjoint matrix, I really mean the matrix that it's made up of the um, So it's one over the determinant of A uh, times that huge matrix. So this is what I would call the adjoint, okay? So what, what I'm talking about here is the explicit formula. That's all, that's all I mean here, the explicit formula. Okay, um, that's all for today. I, I remind you that my office hours start in seven minutes. You're very welcome. Uh, to um, see me there, okay?